and we are broadcasting live from the beautiful Dillon State Park here in East Central Ohio. If you haven't pressed the follow button, please do so, and you'll be notified one hour prior to the start of each Ohio Exopolitics. The music you hear on the beginning of an end of each Ohio Exopolitics is performed by your host, and CDs are available on request. Our guest tonight is Stephen Bassett. His website is www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. Steve is arguably the leading advocate in the nation for ending the 61-year government-imposed truth embargo regarding an extraterrestrial presence engaging the human race. He is a political activist, a lobbyist, a commentator, and a columnist, and it is my pleasure to welcome Stephen Bassett back to the show. Hi, Steve. How are you this evening? I am fine. It's always good to be with you. And is there anything new and exciting in your life? Are you moving around a lot still, or have you stayed down? Or? Oh, I'm always moving. Um, just spent six weeks in the United Kingdom. Um, I spoke at a conference up in Leeds and made some contacts down in London. Uh, uh, there's a lot of interest in this subject in England. I think in UK, I think most people understand that. Uh, so it's always helpful when I get over there. And I'm now back in Los Angeles area. I've been back a few days and uh, working on uh, a couple new projects. Fantastic. Can you tell our listeners about your disclosure petition? And I think you have a new five DVD set on disclosure, correct? Well, I don't. But um, uh, when you go to paradigmresearchgroup.org on the flag page, the initial flag page, again at paradigmresearchgroup.org, you'll see the uh, it's a DVD set that was created by Jennifer Stein and Ron James, a lot of which was filmed at my ex-conferences, Dialogues on Disclosure, and there's a there's also a, a, a documentary involved. It's it's uh, pretty good. It's some, some great stuff in there. So uh, uh, I encourage people to maybe check that out. Um, it's done by Ron James of Sedona Media Company and, and Jennifer Stein. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the major thing right now, and I'm glad to be on to talk about it, is the disclosure petition. And um, this is just been dropped in our lap. Uh, and to make a long story short, here is the deal. The White House has announced that very soon, I think within about seven to eight days, because it's been out now about three weeks, and I think they wanted to give everybody about 30 days lead time. Very soon, they will uh, announce that they will be accepting petitions to the White House, We the People uh, section of the WhiteHouse.gov website from organizations uh, anywhere in the U.S. Uh, to uh, on, on issues of, of, of importance, whatever uh, people believe uh, needs to be addressed. And then people can sign these petitions. Uh, any petition that receives uh, 5,000 signatures within the first 30 days of its being uploaded will, they promise, will be presented to their staff offices for consideration and then distributed to whichever part of the government's appropriate. Uh, that's not my interest, though, primarily. That's all fine and dandy, but that's not what we're really after here. Um, they did something similar. Uh, the Obama administration, after he was elected in November 4th, during the transition period between November the 4th, January 20, 2009, on, the, on, a, on a website called change.gov, they did a little, how would you say, citizen interaction, allowing people to put up issues that they considered important, and people could vote on them. Um, and there were, you know, PRG had one up, and there were, oh, maybe as many as 20. UFO quote related issues up on the uh, change.gov. And that's fine. That was during the transition. We, we got some media from it. We got some press. All good. But this is different. This is three years into the administration. And it's a reach out thing. There's a certain amount of uh, political campaigning going on here uh, without question. But nevertheless, a whole lot of petitions very soon are going to be uh, uploaded onto the whitehouse.gov website, and people are going to be able to sign them. Now, what happens if a petition 
on this subject, on the disclosure matter, were to receive an extraordinary number of signatures, it would generate an international news story, uh, and and it would be promoted by PRG extensively. Uh, any news, of course, covering that petition would just generate more signatures. So we have a golden opportunity for people to, um, how would you say, stand up for the truth on this matter and put their name behind it. So what's going on? It's real simple. There is a uh, the disclosure petition that PRG will be putting up. The wording, not the petition, but the wording is currently resides at this website, disclosurepetition.info. Um, so if you go to disclosurepetition.info, you will see the wording for the disclosure petition along with a whole bunch of little graphics that webmasters can grab and use to put up on sites and, and Facebook and what have you to to link to the ultimate petition when it finally comes up. Here is the wording. It's pretty straightforward. It's unambiguous. Uh, there's no room for debate here. We, the undersigned, strongly urge the President of the United States to formally acknowledge an extraterrestrial presence engaging the human race and immediately release into the public domain all files from all agencies and military services relevant to this phenomenon. That's about as straightforward as you can get. Mm -hmm. And very soon, that petition will go up on the White House website. It will have a, 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 a link, an URL. And this link will be immediately um, promoted uh, to the extent that PRG can do it. Um, international press releases will go out immediately. It will be posted to many, many websites, uh, many, many rather Facebook pages. It will be linked from, obviously, Paradigm Research Group's websites. And I have, uh, you know, I'm already done about, I don't know, 10, 10, 10 interviews pre-promoting it, pre-promoting pre, uh, it. Uh, and I will plan to do probably 20, 30 more uh, right after, in the, in the weeks following, the petition going up at whitehouse.gov. So I'm going to do what I can to get it launched now. The question is, will it go viral? And this this is a cool idea. This this, this is something new. I, I think if you if you go, you don't you don't have to go back that many years before the idea of oh my video went viral. Nobody would have known what you're talking about. But I think everybody in your audience tonight knows what we're talking about. We know that if a video or something on the web resonates with people in a certain special way that the links start getting passed exponentially around the world and people go check it out. This is called going viral. One of the most famous viral videos of all time was the Numa Numa guy. Um, this is a fellow that took a broomstick and did a little dance in his bedroom <laughs> Uh, saying Numa Numa from time to time. This thing went mega viral. I believe if you check it now, I think it hit 62 million views, something like that. That's called mega viral. But guess what? If you go to YouTube.com and you put UFO into the YouTube search, you'll get about 30,000 videos, which is pretty significant in and of itself. All right. 30,000 YouTube videos about UFOs in some fashion. But then you want to sort them by uh, m m a, a view, number of views, view count, I think they say. When you do that, the most viewed UFO videos will come up, and what you will find is the number one is 36 million views. Number two is around 16 million, and then 14, 14, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, like that. Mm -hmm. All of those went viral. Millions of people went to watch these videos, a lot of which are about two minutes long. Now, what's interesting about this, this is where it gets even more interesting, is that most of these viral, and, and in one case mega viral, uh, YouTube videos about UFOs are hoaxes. But nevertheless, people went 
to watch them, not because they wanted to go see a hoax. They they, they went to watch them because in case it might not be a hoax, right? because of the interest in the subject. So the question remains, if millions of people are willing to go and watch a two-minute video on YouTube, would millions go to the WhiteHouse.gov website and sign a petition aiming to get the real truth about this subject? Not a hoax, but the real deal from the United States government immediately. This is the question to be to be determined. Um, and so the game is – not the game, but the, the plan is this. Spread this link as far as I can, do what I can, and then people start – uh, we'll start uh, passing the link to the to the petition around through Twitter, through Facebook, through MySpace, through their websites, through bulletin boards. And if it gets going, there is no limit to the number of signatures we could have. And if this petition were to get an extraordinary number of signatures, it will be news. Uh, and that's going to draw news articles. It's going to draw more interviews. It's going to draw some mainstream interviews, and that's going to generate even more signatures. And we're going to have a, we're going to have a very profound statement, a very a referendum, significant referendum on disclosure will have taken place. So that's that's what the disclosure petition is all about. Uh, and if you go to disclosurepetition.info, you will see the wording that is eventually going to go up at the White House website and the We the People section. And you will see a bunch of banners that webmasters can grab to put up on their websites or even perhaps into uh, um, their um, up on their uh, Facebook page with the link, the eventual link, to the petition, which is still not known yet, and we won't know until that goes active and goes on up. So... That's what's in the works. Uh, it could be very interesting, and uh, uh, I'm excited about it. And that, that is very exciting. So <clears throat> when we get to where we can sign this petition, mm-hmm. is it like an electronic signature type thing, or how does that work? Yeah, electronic signature. You, you, you know, you'll you'll put a name, and my guess, I, I don't know, we don't know the specifics yet. So uh, this is... Uh, um, I'm speculating a little bit, but my guess is the signatures will be a name, first and a last name, city and state. That's probably what will be listed. I, I'm pretty sure they're not going to list emails. They're not going to list email addresses. Uh, and the other thing that's quite interesting, too, as far as I know, there will be no restriction on who and where. In other words, I don't think that people outside the U.S. will be blocked. I don't think that people that, that are not U.S. citizens will be blocked. I, I think this is going to be for anybody that wants to put their signature. I think they'll use the usual cookies to prevent multiple signings, you know, so somebody can't sign it 20 times, mm-hmm. easily at least. But maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll see. But you know, there's a whole lot of people live overseas. American citizens are overseas, and you, you don't want to prevent them. They're living in France from signing and what have you. So... And a lot of these issues, frankly, have global implications. And I, I don't think anybody would argue that the presence of extraterrestrials is a global matter. And equally uh, valid is the fact that U.S. policy on certain things like this has global implications. Right. So it's not unusual, not inappropriate for people from all over the world to sign the disclosure petition. So we may not be limited to U.S. citizens. We could have anybody in the world. Now, the number of people in the the world based upon the polls that believe E.P. issue is real is between two and three billion. Wow. And I'm I'm not making this up. Right. Um, This is based on Reuter, Roper, CNN, Time and Ipsos. Polling over the last 15 years, about between two and three billion people. So here is a golden opportunity to send a message to the Obama administration. And let me point out that the Obama administration right now, as it's approaching that that legendary first thousand days, is in trouble. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is extremely low approval ratings. Extremely, there's great problems in Washington. Uh, great problems between the Congress and the presidency, and things are not going well at all. And there's already talk of him not possibly winning a 